adrenaline starts flowing when I see that young gentleman. <laughs> what do you have up your sleeve, Mr. O'Keefe? Um, I'm so happy I didn't go through the traditional conservative uh, movement. <laughs> I'm so glad that I didn't go through Washington, D.C. I'm so glad that there nobody gets to tell me what I can or cannot do. And uh, I think that's why so many of us now find ourselves in the Tea Party. <laughs> because uh, the, the Republicans screwed up everything. Uh, if you can't sell freedom and liberty, you suck.
private school, and I just remember everybody saying the people in flyover country were stupid, and the movies and the television that that I saw reflected that that they had a contempt for Middle America. And I remember coming back to my friend Christian's great Thanksgiving and Christmas parties and they were Hollywood filled and you know actors and actresses and it was like you go to school in like New Orleans like what's it like with all those freaky people from flyover country and I just remember I met them I met them they're from Alabama nice families I've met met them from my, my roommates from Georgia totally awesome family and I was like the American people are being maligned by not just Hollywood, but by Katie Couric and Peter Jennings and his lovely and former girlfriend, like Hassan Aswari, whatever their name was, the Palestinian guy. And I was like, I, I, like, I started to go, it's the media. It's the media that's the problem. I'm not worried about former Congressman Jim Wright and his book scandal. I'm not worried about Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer. I'm worried about the mainstream media. I call it the Democrat media complex. It's the natural alliance of the mainstream media, liberal interest groups, uh, mainstream media, liberal interest groups, and, and the Democratic Party. It's just a natural force of life that a center-right nation, a two-to-one ratio of conservatives to liberals, according to Gallup, has to deal with every single day. So, when I met this Dredge guy in 1995, I had nothing better to do to latch on for dear life. And I started to watch, I started to become part of this, what we now know to be the, the new media in 1995. And every single story that was broken, every single story, was, was had to withstand the absolute weight of ABC, CBS, and NBC and CNN, and all the newspapers of you're guilty until proven innocent. The Republicans and the conservatives are the bad guys, and, and then the, the, the Democrats are for the environment, for, for the children. I'm like, oh my God, I, I remember when I was on that team, and how many benefits I got from it, and I was working at <laughs> three in the afternoon, and I wasn't really contributing to society in any appreciable way. And now that I'm starting to see it the other way, it's like constantly swimming upstream. So I remember watching when Drudge wrote the Lewinsky story, and that was a slam dunk. It just was. I was like, okay, he's caught the President of the United States. He's got, I mean, I, Wienergate was pretty salacious, but I'm talking civil cars and an intern here. Okay? <laughs> you know, we're all, we're all like smarting this week because of a wiener and a wiener. That's the Bermuda Triangle of <laughs> pornography. <laughs> so I just remember watching that, that, that Matt had the slam dunk, dunk to end all slam dunks, but then the President of the United States decided to lie. <laughs> he lied. And he lied to everyone. He lied to the country. He lied to his cabinet. Lied to the mainstream media, and I remember an important moment in that. And my new buddy Matt Lauer just hung out with him on the Today Show about a week and a half ago. We're totally close now. <laughs> and we're gonna hang out, right? Let's go to Sag Harbor together. And uh, I remember Matt Lauer did his job, and I like to be Mr. Uh, I like to be mostly sticks, but I do have a few carrots in my uh, back pocket. And uh, Matt Lauer did do his job in January of 1998 when he said to Hillary Clinton, um, you know, there are these crazy accusations out here about your husband and the intern and the line under oath and all that type of stuff. And she, Is it true? And Hillary Clinton said, um, it's not true. Said, well, if it were true, he offered the hypothetical. If it were true, um, what do you think? She says, well, it's not true. I understand. I understand where you're coming from. But if it were true, this is a hypothetical. But it's not true. But if it were true. And I for, I don't know, like six times back and forth, it were true. And she's like, oh, of course, it would be serious if it were true. And then I watched what happened. The lie bought time. And it bought
bought time from mainstream media, spent eight months to try and figure out how to put Humpty Dumpty's back together again. <laughs> and it weirdly did, and I watched how they manipulated language, they manipulated polls, they, manip they used the full weight of Vanity Fair and Esquire magazine and, 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 and a very sophisticated strategy to turn the conservatives into panty sniffers. That they were just obsessed with the, the president's sex life, not that it had anything to do with it. He was intimidating witnesses, telling Monica that he had to tell uh, Linda Tripp to lie on her oath. They decided to say, what, what dirt do we have on Linda Tripp to shut her up? Well, let's just make fun of her looks. I'm like, okay. This is our media. I used to think that they were biased, but then I, we started to head into a territory. I was like, this is evil. This behavior that they're doing against Kathy and Willie, the women. I was like, I believe her. I believe her. Why would she lie? She was a huge Democratic fundraiser. I believe Juanita Broadbrook. I believe all of these women. There's a consistency here to this guy's behavior, yet the mainstream media is covering up for him. And they created a mechanism by which they simply split the country, which is what the left does. Critical theory, it's in my book. You gotta buy it, it's the best book ever. Well, actually, it's not, it's not David Mammon's book, The Secret Knowledge, is written better than mine. Basically, the same subject matter kind of sucks. Uh, but he's David Mann. Uh, oh well. And I watched, I watched how the media took this slam dunk and put it back through the, 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 um, the hoop. The hoop. Thank you very much. People that helped me when I'm in speeches and I, I'm at a loss for words. And, it, and I said, okay, something has to be done about this. Something has to be done about this imbalance of Power. The fact that this is a center-right nation and this mainstream media, this allegedly neutral and objective group of people, who indeed they are, uh, based out of New York and Los Angeles, where I have an apartment and a house thing, you I'm by coastal, I'm hip, and I'm shallow. I know what you're up to. I go to cocktail parties, and I hear your contempt for people from Middle America. Don't tell me you're neutral. So my entire business. having no money, <laughs> and B, having the resources of the American people who I became friends with in the Monroe Dormitory uh, at Tulane University, because they were nice. Their parents were nice, their friends were nice, and I, I went back to Los Angeles and said, these people are nice, you need to stop whining them. You gotta, you gotta stop whining them. And I said, okay, to hell with it. I'm gonna go to war against my neighbors. It's the most awkward thing. Uh, I still live there. And I, I show up at like kids' parties with moon bounces, and I'm standing off to the side, and people are glaring at me. I have pictures, weird pictures, that, that people send me at work. So don't, don't come up to me. I'm going to stand over here and don't bother me. So anyway, everything I need to learn, I learned during the Clinton era. Everything, 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 everything. Everything, everything. It's the way that they consorted together, the way that, that they literally used private detectives and leaked the information to the Washington Post and the New York Times, and, and they were like, oh, Henry Hyde had an affair in 1954, and that's relevant. Are you kidding me? And then I remember when they got down to the nitty gritty, they're like, wow, there's stuff that even Salon.com won't even publish. They leaked the stuff to Larry Flint, and the White House was forced to go, hey, did you happen to see the press conference from that great publisher, from that great movie, The People vs. Larry Flint, that free speech, you know, icon? Uh, he created the Flint Report, and he went after anyone and everything on everything that their private detectives leaked. And I said, holy mackerel, the collusion between the mainstream media, the objectively neutral mainstream media and the Democratic Party, so nasty, somebody has to stand up to this, and it can't just be AM talk radio and blogs saying the media is biased. We have to stand up and report the truths that are not reported by this group of people.
much about Acorn until James O'Keefe came to me with a bow on top with a box of these videos, and I'm like, holy... <laughs> this is huge. This is huge. Why, James, when you come to a doofus, a shallow doofus, in West Los Angeles in a basement without a budget, why didn't you just go to ABC and CBS and NBC and let them launch the story? And that's because James and Hannah both recognize the same thing I recognize, that the entire game is rigged. So these are the people that I do this with. I do it with you. I, 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 I bizarrely give out my cell phone number at these events. I just like to call me if you have anything. Um, you want to know a really good tip? People always ask me for tips, and this isn't even in the book. The most important tip that I can give you is to be petty. <laughs> um, on Twitter, I don't care if it's Shibli5322 with two followers, I will argue with that person for eight hours. <laughs>
register your wine for crying out loud. <laughs> I'm a fan of yours. And I want, I do want a reconciliation in this country. I do. I want to get back to a point where we can agree to disagree because this is getting a bit ridiculous. This is about 10 immature, 12, 13 immature years of, of the left fighting because we finally realized that Hollywood matters and the mainstream media matters and, and the colleges matter and the K-12s through matter and we're finally saying maybe we should wrest absolute control from these people and, and so have a debate again. And they didn't like it, they fought back and then we decided to fight back and it's really bad. And what I think we're heading towards is the British newspaper model. You know, you've got the Guardian, and the Independent, and I read them, and they're left of center, and from time to time they break stories that I want to link to. I'm like, that's a pretty compelling story, because they're obsessed with big business, and they break stories on big businesses being corrupt, and then you've got the right of center papers that are kind of obsessed with big corporations, I mean, with big government, and, and I think there's like kind of a cool parody there. I don't, I'm not like for suppressing the outing of corrupt corporations. I'm not for the outing of get into trouble getting fired or quitting the day that they get caught. And I'm stretching out. involving some Muslim women wearing hijabs 
uh, last night. <laughs> it's so fun being lectured by them on proper journalism when the questions that they're asking you are psychedelic. That's <laughs> He doesn't understand that I now love him. I love him. Not because I'm Jesus-like, but because he makes me laugh. And he can make me laugh I love. And so, I want to end on a very peaceful note. Because in my book, I write about how you need to go into enemy territory like Bill Maher. And I say, don't do it, don't do it. After I go and Bill Maher, baristas with those weird tires in their ears, you know, those like weird things, baristas go, you know, dude, I don't like your politics at all, but I thought it was pretty cool that you stood up for what you believed in. <laughs> and that was me, you know, 20 years ago. The only way we're going to convince these people that we're not evil, that, that, that our freedom and our liberties we want not just for our selfish shallow selves, but for them as well, and that we have to get it through their thick skulls. That's why I'm going to be hanging out and drinking with them tonight, if they so choose. But this crazy thing, I'll end it on this note. I don't know. I'll end it on this note. Why not? I'm sitting here, and I'm wondering, what the hell was that? Why did I do that in the first place? Because I like it. That's the answer. It's totally fun. I like creating media. I like the, 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 the Mary Prankster thing going on. That's why. But I also want to change minds. I want there to be the Andrew Breitbart 20 years ago who saw the Clarence Thomas hearings and said something's wrong with this picture. You cannot continue to preach to the choir. We have to bring in. I have a special project, and I want to end it. I, well, sh don't share this. This is off the record, my friends. I have a special project that I'm working on. And if you're going to think it's unbelievable, and it's, 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 you're not going to believe it, but this is 100% true. I'm working on, it's called Operation Alan Combs.